I'm sorry, but this is gonna be a show. This is gonna, these girls both have on their dancing shoes. I am so ready for this lip sync. I am so ready for this lip sync. It's a new day in the workroom and it's a double feature. Ah, yes. Paramount decided let's not just send out the premiere today. Let's do episode two as well. I can't wait. And I can't stop doing this. Let's get into the show. I want to thank y'all for bailing me out of jail. Right. <laughs> we need to see what's going on in this box. Yeah. So the girls are back in the workroom and they have the box where all the girls drop their ballots. I think this is a horrible idea for the sake of relationships in the workroom, but this is brilliant for the sake of TV and drama. Eight and nine. Serena. Cha, cha, cha. It is very motivating to have your fellow co-workers believe in you as much as you believe in yourself. Wow. I am shocked. None of the girls voted for Trinity to go home. All of them voted for Serena. But in the grand scheme of things, I can see where a lot of girls would be like, send Serena home instead of Trinity because Trinity is a stronger competitor and They've probably, well, Trinity says she doesn't know a lot of any of these girls personally, like have like personal friendships with them. And there's no other season six girl here. But I feel like Trinity is well respected, like throughout the drag community in America, even though she's not like bench and butt, like buddy buddy <laughs> with a lot of the girls, they know her hustle, they know her work and they respect her. And I'm sure they respect Serena as well, but Trini Trinity is that girl. She's that, she that, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? What did Yada pick? I picked Trinity. The nerd. Girl. Like, girl. <laughs> Yada admits or, you know, tells the group that she chose Trinity to go home. And Trinity's taking it personally. Does Trinity have right to take it personally? Um, everyone's feeling is valid. Everyone's feelings are valid. You know, if that's how you feel, then express it, you know? Yeah, you know? <laughs> I'm laughing, I'm sorry, because you can't be mad that you sucked and someone chose you to go home. Just do better, baby. Uh, if I were Yara, as a competitor, I would have chosen Trinity. But because I'm a fan of the show and I'm just watching as a spectator, uh, I would have wanted to see uh, uh, Serena go. What if I'm the trade of the season? Oh, oh, oh. I think there's a couple trade here. I don't think it's no trade here. The girls are talking about who's a trade of the season. Like, none of y'all are trades. <laughs> I'm glad that Trinity asked the question, like, what do you define as trade? Because for the past umpteen years on Drag Race, a lot of them been like throwing that terminology around when, you know, culturally in the PO, in the black, you know, um, and Latinx gay sub communities, trade wasn't really, trade was not a term used for pretty boys. If you're a pretty boy, you're a pretty boy. If you're a trade, you're a, you're something else, you know? <laughs> Caliente got it right. There's a slight danger to it, and it's real mask, as uh, Akaria said. So now y'all know, pretty boys aren't trade. It's not just any ball. It's a blue ball. Yeah. <laughs> and girl, it's been a long time coming. The maxi challenge this week is a ball, and it is a blue ball. Pun intended. This is RuPaul's Drag Race. What do you think? <laughs> uh, so the first runway, which out of three, you have Blue Better Work, which is a blue collar working girl, Blue Jean Baby, which is denim, denim, denim all day, and Blue Ball Bonanza, which is a sewing challenge baked into it. You gotta make something out of unconventional materials found in the workroom. And I can't wait to see how this mess is gonna work out. I would live 
if Jiggly Caliente recreated that freaking baked potato out of blue stuff. That's all I want for myself. Please. And you found so much success. I've been very blessed, honestly, yeah. really. Like, my success has been gained by watching people and you specifically on how you carry yourself. It's really cool when you think about the cast of this week. It's really cool when you think about the cast of this season of All Stars. You have Jiggly Caliente that is really out here acting on Emmy Award winning shows. Uh, you have Eureka O'Hara, who is a main cast member of uh, Emmy nominated, you know, TV series. They're really successful girls in this group. And I like that RuPaul is, you know, bringing that to the forefront in his discussions with the girls in the workroom because that's really sickening. We've never really had that before. You happy about your ball luck? Yeah. Good. But I'm hiding it so nobody see it. <laughs> I haven't gotten to see what Yara's doing. Mm-mm. In the workroom, a lot of the girls are stressed out over these unconventional materials, but Yara Sofia seems to be having a whale of a time. We all know Yara is amazing at constructing garments and she's very creative. She's proved that time and time again on her past seasons, but I don't know what she's doing because she ain't showing nobody. Like, we don't know what her outfit's gonna be yet. Somebody's got to go home, so how we thinking, how we feeling? I kind of want to know, like, are we all coming to a consensus on how we're doing it? Like, are we making rules or are we just doing our own thing? The dreaded conversation, the annoying conversation about what are we going to do when it comes to voting? Do we have a plan? Blah, blah, blah. Like, it's episode two. Let's not talk about that because if it was going to be a conversation, it would have been had last week. And integrity schmintegrity. Like, at the end of the day, it's a competition. If integrity means you being able to stand behind whatever decision you make, then you could choose to send all the stronger players home and just be proud in your decision, stand behind it. That's what I did, and I'm okay with it. Naomi Small stood behind her decision to send home Manila. So was that integrity? <laughs> At the end of the day, just send home whoever you feel like you don't want in the competition the next week, and the chips fall where they may. First of all, RuPaul looks amazing today, and I love this cut of dress on her. She wears it a few times, you know, like it's a thing, but we already know RuPaul loves the silhouette, and when it's good, it's good. She sticks by it. She looks amazing. And you already know, Big Frida in the house. 36 looks on the runway. <sighs> Let's get it. Category is Blue Better Work. Raja O'Hara looks really great in her Blue Better Work look. It's well thought out. It's giving me construction worker, but with fashion. I love it. Miss Kylie Love is slaying. Like, this woman is freaking fabulous in every sense of the word. She's giving you a nice construction look. However, I feel like she should have saved... Like, she gave us... Uh, I love it. I really love the denim outfit. There's nothing wrong about it. It's freaking stunner. If you give me this for this working girl look, I can't wait to see what you do for the denim look. Okay, Eureka looks freaking bomb. Bomb.com.org.gorg, like all of that. Fit perfect, look perfect, smells like money. All right, Jan looks amazing. This outfit is really amazingly thought through and like details down, all of that amazing. The hair piece, but what, are you a mechanic? Is that why you have tires on you? You're a working girl. I don't know if you're a car, you're just wheels or you're a mechanic. I'm gonna say you're a mechanic. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of living for Jiggly's a sanitation outfit. It's camp, which I never expected from Jiggly. Where are you gonna bin from, Jiggly? Like, where are you gonna bin from? Okay, Big Silk is really out here being a milkmaid in the best possible way. The color red was throwing me off for a minute. I was like, what? Because milkmaids are normally like in full white or there's some blue incorporated into their outfits, like a blue jacket. But this red version, I live for it. And the props, I'd like to buy that, please. Scarlet Envy as a woodcutter, yes, please. 
all day. I love to see a pretty sexy girl do camp because it tells me there's more to you, there's depth to you. Akira C. Davenport, I ship this look. It's bomb. I love me some Pandora box. She came out as a lunch lady. I thought the costume was a bit simple. The only thing I thought that kind of elevated the look was like broad shoulders. I'm like, all right, there's some element of fashion here, even though the outfit's really plain. She did a reveal. She gave us a reveal. We did not square what she gave it to us. And I think the reveal is turning out to be like a server in a diner. She didn't say that. She was like, she's ready to party, but I got like lunch lady by day, diner, server by night. Yeah. If it's one thing you should expect from Jara Sofia by now, is them titties. Them jugs will be in every single outfit incorporated. I live for that. She is giving me construction realness. She's perfection. It's a little weird, but I'm really into Ginger Minja's plumber costume right now. I don't want to be, but I am. Trinity K. Bonet. Why? I love it from the neck up. But the neck down, it feels like you needed to dragify it a little bit. Cut the pant into like a biker short and make the boots like high heels and taper the waist in on the shirt. Like make the shirt like, you cannot just come out in a straight out costume you got from the shop. Category is blue jean baby. Raja's blue jean baby is really turning it for me. I would only change the hat, the shoe, the glove. I would swap those out for some completely different accessories. But the garment itself and the necklace, the, the, you know, the necklaces, I'm living for that actually. Like, this is bomb. Miss Kylie, your body is ridiculous. It's unfair to be that gorgeous. What are the rest of us supposed to do? Like, I should just go to sleep right now. I love this on her. She's giving you the Christina, the Britney, the body. She is giving you blue jeans. She's representing for the trans community with the trans colors. But your everyday woman look was more jean than this. This might bite you in the butt. I don't know. I love Eureka and Eureka got money, but this look feels like it was bought off the rack. I mean, like it's a very beautifully constructed garment, but it doesn't feel draggy enough. It's obviously custom. I mean, Eureka wears custom, but it just feels like a high fashion thing that you could get from a store. Like it's just too perfectly made. If And that's a weird thing to say, but it feels like I could see some girls walking down the street in this, like taking pictures like as influencers, you know, like high fashion girls. It doesn't feel like this is so dragged up that nobody else can wear this but me. Ooh, Jandon pissed on everybody who just came out before her. Like everybody who came up before Jan, you've been erased. Jan is that girl right now. This is, what's the word? Stunning, amazing, spectacular, revolutionary. Maybe. Who don't love me some Jiggly? Like, who don't love you some Jiggly? But this Jiggly Caliente blue jean baby look is a miss for me. No, this was not the proper use of denim for your look. No. The Reverend Silky stepped out and she was giving me a lot. I love the outfit but I didn't feel like it was enough jean if, for me to like, I'm sorry. It was more red fringe than it was freaking denim. What's up with that? If it's one thing I like about Scarlet Envy, she's really diverse with her style. Yeah, she's giving you a similar hat style as she did for the workroom entrance, but a lot of things she does, it's not like this is my specific aesthetic and this is all I do. She will give you a little bit of everything. And I really like that about her. This was cute. Akira will always be giving you body because that's just who Akira is. I love everything from the braids to the two, early 2000s, like cut up from the gut all the way up. Like, I love this. This is everything to me. Ooh, Pandora. I don't know. 
I don't know. I really, really don't know. I want to say I love it, but I really don't love the fit. It could work. It's campy. Pandora's campy. Yeah. But the fit is off. It's a no for me. Jara Sofia will give you Jara Sofia nudity. I live. I live. I love. The jeans were so low, I swear to you, I could see the balls and the sockets. Everything. She looks amazing. Sometimes I really forget how tiny Ginger Minch is. She is really that small. <laughs> Everything. I love Ginger's look. I think she looks adorable. If it's one thing Miss TKB will give you is a fully realized and executed look. And she did that. Category is Blue Ball Bonanza, a high fashion look using random blue materials. Okay, first of all, Raja D. O'Hara is an amazing seamstress. This is crazy. I want to just soak it in for a second. Like her Blue Ball Bonanza look is impeccably made. Wasn't she working with materials from a fold up chair? And then the hair and the shoe go perfectly into it. <sighs> I'm gonna need a minute. All right, Miss Sonique Love is serving. Like, I didn't know what her capabilities were as a seamstress, but this is bomb. Head to toe, bomb. This is really serving me like J-Lo at the MTV. Like, it's giving. It's giving what it's supposed to have gave. Ooh, I did not expect this from Eureka. This is a completely different like lane. I am freaking gagged right now. One, it's constructed amazingly. She made a bag out of it. And I am seeing all up in the hoo-ha and I'm loving this. Like this is freaking bomb. This is gonna be a really tight competition. All right, Jan, love you, love the outfit. It's really well made. However, I feel like I've seen the silhouette way too much and it's not giving what I wanted to have gave. So, eh. This jiggly look is actually really nice and it's kind of fashion forward. I love this. It's, it's very like, I have money, but I like to dress like a bum. My aesthetic. <laughs> So normally I don't recommend big girls to use really bulky fabric because I feel like if it's not done right, it can just add to you and not be flattering. But Silky is kind of serving in this look. I'm into the cape, I'm into the pant. Like, she made a whole pant. You better work. Like, I love all of that. I just don't think she needed the big prop in her hand. I don't know if she really necessarily needed the air muffs. Everything else is pretty good. Ooh, Scarlet baby. Like, this, this, this is it. Back in the day when Scarlet was on the show, she didn't really do a whole lot of body contouring, but now she is giving me all the curves and swerves and beautiful blue goddessness that I really need from her. I love her outfit, and she made that. You're that girl. Damn, that's hot. I love me some Akira, we know this. Let's move on from that. Now into the outfit. It's a no dog. I like that you did the cups and you're making an effect, but it just looks bulky and it looks really, really, really arts and craft compared to everything else that's coming on the runway. I know it's hard because a lot of girls got actual fabric and she chose an actual unconventional material, but this was not the way to do it. No ma'am. Pandora, I don't love that the waist is so bulky. It literally gives her no shape. It's an interesting cut, it's asymmetrical. It's like, you know, high fashion 101 for the early 2000s, but it doesn't give her any shape. So it's a no for me. Jara didn't want anyone to see her outfit before it was like time to go on the runway and it's beautiful, like it's stunning. It's not the best one I've seen so far, but it does have unconventional material. It's not like a regular fabric and it looks freaking amazing. 
so she might have a really good chance of being in the top. Who knows? The Minge looks cute. The Minge looks cute. I'm not gagging, but she looks cute. Trinity. Oh my goodness. I love this. <sighs> Glinda the Good Witch, Cinderella, you name it, every fella, it's amazing. All right, you're back on my radar. I still stand you, never doubted you. I'm just happy I know you're definitely not going anywhere this week. <laughs> okay. First of all, congratulations Saraja for winning this week's challenge. She completely deserves it. She looks amazing. Every single category, I loved what she did. Now for the bottom queens, baby. She was last week on the top, and now this week she's on the bottom. Miss Yara Sofia and Miss Jiggly Caliente. Now these are queens that were like OG girls, you know, season three and season four, All Stars one. It's kind of sad to see them in the bottom already, knowing that one of them has to sashay away, but not really because obviously someone's coming back at some point. We'll find out more about that later on, I guess. I feel like the girls are gonna try to get Miss Sophia out and the girls are gonna try and save Jiggly because Jiggly is real friendly with everyone. That's what I see happening. I just wanna lay out the facts. Like Yara, do I think that she had a better constructed look today in the ball? I do. Do I like love hearing Jiggly's fight? 100%. A lot of these girls don't know what way to choose with the voting. If I were there, <laughs> all right, this is how I would look at it. It's a ball, so two of the outfits you had to bring from home. So they should be good. Uh, but then there's this make one in the workroom, you know, category, which it needs to be like the showstopper. I would have voted for Yara to stay because her cons her final garment was just amazing compared to the other person in the bottom with her. What would you guys have done? I don't know who they got coming in here, but bitch, she is getting assassinated. Check my resume, bitch. Do I see the eleven? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll send her back home too. Yeah, I'm ready to see who this is. Who's this assassin? Reveal yourself! Oh, oh, bitch. Oh, bitch. That's Brooklyn Heights. Judge of Canada's Drag Race. You better. <laughs> I'm sorry, but this is gonna be a show. This is gonna, these girls both have on their dancing shoes. I am so ready for this lip sync. I am so ready for this lip sync. That's the end? <laughs> oh my God, that lip sync was too good. Like, it was just so sexy. And if you watch my reaction videos, you know that I like when they are sexy. <laughs> All right, now, I don't know who I'll give this to. They both performed so freaking fantastic. I, I My mouth is saying Brooklyn, but another side of my mind is like, but Raja like was killing it too. <sighs> I don't know, I don't know. I, I can't choose, I cannot choose, I just can't. It's a tie, baby. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I kind of felt like this would have been a thing, but I'm like, I don't think it's possible. Would RuPaul really do that? Because two queens might possibly go home this way. Holy cow. Holy moly. Holy Yara and Jiggly. The queen I chose was Jiggly Caliente. And the queen they have chosen to get the chop is Jiggly Caliente. Wow. Wow. Sorry, Jiggly. I guess now that I'm seeing who the girls are voting for, it feels like they're not trying to get rid of the biggest competition. They're really trying to just sift out whoever they feel like will not make it that far or whoever they feel like isn't the best queen that's in the bottom, which is kind of fair if you want like a really balanced game 
and a season full of really strong people making it to the end. Damn, Jiggly. Two lipsticks and both had your name on it. Damn. Well, that's how the cookie crumbles. I cannot tell you how happy I am for this season. The past couple of <laughs> reaction seasons, uh, it's been rough. It's been rough. And I needed a really, I needed a pick me up and this is it. I'm so happy to be reacting to this with you guys. Don't forget to go over to my Patreon for more exclusive content and behind the scenes tea and to really get the what I really, really, really think about some stuff. And like, comment, share, subscribe. Make sure you click that subscribe button and share with your aunties because they love Drag Race and they're going to love to hear what I have to say about it. All right, guys, until next time. Bye. Hey, beautiful humans. I have so much more content. Come on, watch my shit.